Hey folks, welcome back to Pony Box Woodshop. And this episode is all about dado stacks. I'm gonna teach you how to install them, use them, and what cuts you can make with them. So stay tuned. So once it's broken down, a dado stack is actually a pretty simple tool, but it brings a lot to any wood shop. It's mainly used to make three-sided dados and cabinetry and for dividers in a wide variety of different woodworking projects. But I also use mine to make tenons when I'm making mortise and tenons. Uh, I use it when making box joints or finger joints, and I also use it when making rabbits. And I'll show you an example of just about all of those different ways to use this later on in the video. First, I'm going to introduce you to the dado stack and show you exactly how to install it into the table saw. So in every dado stack, you're going to find two outer blades. And these two outer blades are where we're going to sandwich the chippers and spacers to make the width of your cut. Basically, on almost all of them, your writing is going to go towards the outside of the stack. So next up in your dado stack pack, you're going to find chippers. And chippers are usually have two to four blades depending on the manufacturer. In my set, it comes with five and they're in different widths. And these are gonna stack up in between your two outer blades to make up for your final width. Also in your dado stack kit, you're probably gonna find these little spacers. And these little spacers go between your chippers and your outer blades and that's for fine tuning that width. When you just need a little bit more or a little bit less, you can take these in and out. So when it comes to figuring out the width of cut that you're gonna need, the best way that I know how to do that is to lay the piece down that you're gonna cut the dado to fit. I like to use my table saw bed for this because I know that it's nice and flat and there's no imperfections. I can lay that piece directly down on it and I know that I'm getting a true measurement. Next, I'm gonna lay one of my outside blades down and then I'm gonna start stacking some chippers. Now when you're stacking these chippers, just make sure that your blade teeth are alternating and they're not touching. I'm gonna put one more on there and then check my width. These things are sharp, by the way. A little blood never hurt anybody. All right, to check my final width, I'm gonna lay my other outside piece down, again, making sure that the teeth are alternating and not touching, and then slide the piece up next to it. Now this is still a little less than the piece that I'm wanting to cut, and I'm gonna add a shim. Still needs a little bit more. One important thing to remember is when you're putting multiple shims in, spread them out in between different chippers. Don't stack them all in one place because that could lead to some imperfect cuts. So I'm gonna remove this chipper, place that shim down, and then put this chipper back. All right, now we can put our other blade back down. I'm gonna slide that up, run my finger across, and that looks pretty good. And that's gonna be a nice, tight dado. All right, as you see here, I have the table saw insert out, I have the regular blade off, and I have my writhing knife out. Something to note when you're installing dado stacks is never go thick enough to where there isn't at least two or three threads sticking out at the end. You want this nut to have a good bite so that the blades are nice and tight. You don't necessarily have to use a washer with a dado stack, but you definitely want to have this nut thread it on two to three threads and tighten really well. And now we're going to put our saw blades on in the orientation that we tested them out. First one up is one of the outer blades. And again, the writing goes on the outside. Shim, chipper. And again, here's where we need to start paying attention that our teeth are alternating and they're not touching. We're gonna go another shim, another chipper. And lastly, the second outer blade and make sure that the orientation of the blade is correct with the designated side to the outside. Now that they're all on, you need to make sure that none of your teeth are touching and that looks pretty good. All right, we're gonna see if I have enough room to use the washer and it looks like I do. I have three threads sticking out so I can use the washer and the nut, get that snug and that looks pretty good. Now, although my saw has this little button here that I can stop the arbor from spinning to tighten it down, anytime I'm installing a dado stack, I like to use a board on the backside to pry my blade from moving uh, because even though when you depress this, sometimes your blades in the middle wanna twist and turn and start to touch each other. There we go. Now it's nice and tight and I didn't have to worry about the blades moving at all. None of the teeth are touching and this is a properly installed dado stack. And now I'm gonna change out my zero clearance table saw insert for the one that I use for my dado stacks. The ones that I get, uh, my buddy Matt from Gotwood Workshop makes these on a CNC and I purchased them from him. I'll tag him down in the description section in case y'all wanna check those out. 
Now that it's installed properly into our table saw, I'll show you three different ways that I use it on projects on a regular basis. The first thing we're gonna need is your miter gauge. And on that miter gauge, attach a backer to it. This backer is gonna help us in two different ways. One, it's gonna help us push the piece through the dado stack safely with our fingers away from the blades. And it's gonna help prevent any blowout of the backside of our workpiece. Now when it comes to cutting dados, that's about as good of a fit as you can ask for. Next up I'll show you how I use my table saw fence to make dados lengthwise down the long edge of the board. So this is a pretty basic and straightforward cut. You're just cutting a dado down the long edge of the board using your table saw fence as a guide at whatever distance you want it off this edge. Now one thing I want to mention is too many times I see people using their hands to push this piece through because they think they're safe since this blade is underneath the top edge of the board. There's still way too many things that could go wrong, so make sure you're using a good push block. Keep your hands safely away from the board when using it. I use these micro jig ones. I really like them because they have these little drop down tabs. So you put them on the back side, it drops down, catches the back side of the board and helps you push it through. So next up, I'm gonna show you how I make rabbits and tenons with my dado stack. Now, the first thing you do is make a sacrificial fence for your table saw fence. This is just a three quarter inch MDF board that I cut to the same length and height as my table saw fence. And then using my router table, I made a few dovetail slots on the sides because when I place it up against the fence, I can use these handy little dovetail clamps just to slide straight in and attach it. Now, I like to use these dovetail clamps on these table saw fences because they stay completely out of the way and it gives you the entire surface of the board to use. So I'm gonna slide this fence over into place and I'm gonna lower the table saw blade all the way down. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is mark the height that I want the blade to come up. I'm gonna mark it at about a half inch because that's about as high as I'll ever need this. So I'm gonna mark this at a half inch. Then I'm gonna slide this on over. Now, one thing to watch out for is don't slide it too far over so when you raise the blade, it gets into your regular fence. I know that my dado stack is a half inch wide right now, and this is a three quarter inch piece of NDF. So I'm just gonna not cover the dado stack completely just to be 100% sure. Then I'm gonna turn on my table saw and raise the blade up to that half inch mark. <laughs> Now that the table saw blade has been cut out, I can move my fence over to cut the width of rabbits that I want, which I'm gonna set that up right about there. And now I'm ready to run my boards through. have it perfect rabbits all the way around and you can see how the sacrificial fence lets us go all the way up against the piece and cut all the way towards the end Now, of course, if this was for a project, I would have used different measurements for my tenon, but I wanted to show you with the current setup that I had, how you can easily make tenons with a dado stack and how useful a dado stack is in a workshop.
All right, folks, that does it for us today. And as always, if you like the video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up, leaving me a comment. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. I'll get to all of them. Also, I'll throw some affiliate links down in the description section below on the dado stack that I was using, as well as the little dovetail clamps and all the other good stuff, including the table saw. Anytime you use those links, it supports the channel and I really appreciate it. We'll see you next week.